If you're like most people, you face this paradox. You would like an extra 500 to 1000 to $2,000 a month, but you don't have any time to start the side business needed to deposit that kind of cash into your account. You have this desire to make it happen, but not the time or the space to pull it off. If that's you, then today's episode is going to really, really help you out. I'm going to share with you three steps to building a profitable side business online, even if you're crazy busy. Let's discuss. Welcome to episode 72 of The Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build your online business, work less, and live and give more. I'm your host, Graham Cochran. Pumped to hang out with you today. Thank you for your time. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, thank you so much for all the ratings and reviews. Keep it up. It really, really means a lot. And if you're watching here on YouTube, thanks for all the great comments, the likes, the subscribes. I see you. I love the conversations we're having in the comments below. Uh, it means a ton to see that this content is resonating with you today. Are you crazy busy? Raise your hand if you are. I'm crazy busy. Um, there's always something going on, whether it's kids, whether it's uh, marriage, church, work, friends, family. There's a lot to do. Pandemics takes up your time. Watching the news because of the pandemic, right? There's a lot going on. And so it can seem overwhelming. And I don't know if you crush content like this on business and you're just you're excited slash just beat down because you're like, when am I going to have time to implement these cool ideas? I'm too busy. Well, we're going to talk about that today. Uh, and I'm going to give you three practical steps you can follow to launch or grow your online business, even if you're crazy busy, even if you only have 30 minutes a day. Okay, I'm going to walk you through that. Before we do that, I want to give you something so you can start downloading it and have it in your you know, your pocket in case you don't get all the way through this episode. And that is a step-by-step -step checklist to launch your online business. It's my 30-day online income jumpstart. This is a four-week step-by-step plan that you can follow to go from zero audience, zero income to making your first $500 easily in the next 30 days. But what you'll have done is built a platform that can help you make your next $500,000 because it's the business model that I am using for both of my businesses. It's the same foundation, but it gets you kick-started, gets it all ready and launched and putting money in your pocket in the next 30 days. I want you to download this really, really simple, easy to read PDF. It's bullet points, my friend, not paragraphs, bullet points. It's free. It's helpful. It's fun. My students are using it, making $500, $800, $1,000 in the first 30 days. Just go to grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. Pick it up, grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to link to it below here as well. So the question is, you're crazy busy. How do you get this thing going? How do you do this in 30 minutes a day? I don't have time to actually do all the stuff that I'm reading about, learning about. I got you. When it comes down to success in business or anything, especially when time is tight, you got to understand three keywords. Minimum effective dose. Minimum effective dose. Okay. This was this was something that made sense to me my whole life. This was something that was reinforced to me uh, through Tim Ferriss's amazing work, the four hour work week. What matters is that you do the minimum amount that's effective to reach your goals. It is wasteful to do more than is needed to reach your goals. Just like it's wasteful to use more energy or more food than is needed to reach your goals. More than is needed is a waste. Less than is needed is ineffective. The minimum effective amount or dose of your effort, tasks, whatever it is, is the ideal. So if you understand those three words, you understand that you can't do it all. You can't even run a business that's as sleek or as amazing as you want it to be uh, if you don't have time. Now, if you have all the time in the world, you can waste three, four, five hours a day choosing the color of the buttons on your website or flipping through templates for your next email you're going to send out. But none of that matters, right? None of that's going to actually put money in your pocket or prohibit you from putting money in your pocket. But if it's fun and you like it and you have the time, great. I'm assuming you're busy. So if you need to launch this business and put serious income in your pocket, and all you have is the equivalent of 30 minutes a day, which is about three hours a week, then minimum effective dose are going to be the three words. I mean, have, tattoo them 
on your arm, right? It's so important. That's, that's all that matters. That's how I've built both of my businesses, a minimum effective dose. So what is the minimum effective dose? These three steps. You ready? I'm ready. Step number one to launching your online business to be able to put 500 to 1,000 to 2,000, $3,000 a month in your pocket, even if you only have 30 minutes a day, is to find the intersection of passion and value. The intersection of your passion and what's valuable to other people, okay? I hate the advice, follow your passion. Live your passion. I hate it because it's harmful to share that advice. Why is it harmful? Because it's half-truths. It's a half-truth. You go tell a group of graduating seniors in high school or college that the secret to success is to just be passionate about something and do it with all your, your might and just go follow your passion. You're just, you're just setting them up for failure. Not because they won't be successful, not because I'm a realist and I want to have a glass half empty and lower my expectations so if life goes great, I'm pleasantly surprised. That's not my personality. It's because passion doesn't pay the bills. It's because being passionate about something means little to the outside world. Yay. Yay, you're passionate about something. I'm passionate about eating pizza. Nobody gives a rip other than me. Passion doesn't pay the bills. Now, don't mishear me. Passion is very important. That's why I said these people are sharing a half-truth. It's not that passion is irrelevant. Passion is very relevant, okay? I believe to do great work and to not get burned out, and by not getting burned out, you can stay in this business long enough to be successful because it takes a long time to be successful. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Some people blow up really, really quick. They're the exception rather than the rule. To be able to stay in this game long enough to become wealthy and successful and reach all your goals, you have to be passionate about it. You have to love what you do. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about some millionaire habits. One of those interesting habits was doing work that they really enjoyed, not work that they loved. It was like a small percentage, 7% of the millionaires studied uh, loved what they did, but the majority, 90 some odd percentage, 96%, 94% really enjoyed what they did. And joy is different than love, but there's enough passion there to really, really get up in the morning and enjoy what they did. Most Americans, most people in the world don't enjoy what they do. So I believe passion is important, but passion alone won't pay the bills. People who are successful doing what they love have found a way to marry their passion with what's valuable to other people, right? So we have to find that sweet spot, that integration, right? Again, going back to my pizza analogy, I can be passionate about pizza, so passionate about pizza. I can write on my mirror, pizza is your passion. I can tattoo on my arm, live your pizza passion, Graham, but it's not gonna put any money in my pocket unless I find a way to intersect that passion with what people find valuable. There are people on Instagram that go around to pizza parlors all around the world and they get filmed eating pizza and reviewing the pizza. They have a huge following. They get sponsor brand deals from companies. They probably get slipped money under the table for just coming to a restaurant and bringing attention to that restaurant. They are finding a way to monetize their pizza passion. They've done it, successful. It is possible. I'm not saying it's impossible to get paid to enjoy pizza. I'm just saying it's more than just your passion. You have to start with passion, but then intersect it with value. So first, let's start with passion. What are you passionate about? What do you love to do? What are you good at? If you're unsure, you're actually not alone. Many of us, as, as we've grown up, have had to shove our passions to the side. We've had to become responsible. Maybe we've become skeptical, cynical about our dreams or our passions or our hopes. I know I did. I wanted to be a rock star. I was passionate about music. I worked really hard at that. I had some cool opportunities uh, that didn't quite turn into what I hope they would long-term uh, music career. And so I had to go sell advertising at a radio station and sit in a cubicle and wear an oversized shirt and a tie. I hated that. Hated my life. Um, felt like a failure. And so I did boring work in corporate America for three years. Good job, cool company, cool people, but I just didn't love the work, wasn't passionate about it. I phoned it in. And it was in the middle of a global recession in 2009 that I lost two jobs. I uh, was on food stamps for 18 months and 
found myself blogging about audio recording, wondering well, what the heck am I doing in my life? I am a complete failure that I started to sniff up what God was doing. I was on sniffing the trail that he was laying for me, that there's something here, there's something here for you to do. And I found over time, slowly a way to provide value around my passion, which is recording music and making music. I was able to build online courses and membership sites and the rest is history. That was my first business and it turned into a million dollar a year business. Amazing. All that to say, I had given up on my passions. I had forgotten what some of my passions were. We had passions when we were kids. We had things we were excited about, but then life kind of has a way of beating those passions out of you. You know what I mean? So if you are that person, you're like, I don't, I don't remember what my passions are. My passions are being able to pay the rent. <laughs> my, my passions are uh, being able to go to bed on time so I'm not so darn tired in the morning when I go to work. Then it's okay. Here's a few questions that I want you to stew on to help you uncover your passion. Start with what comes easy to me. Ask yourself, what comes easy to me? It is amazing to see the stuff that comes easy to certain people that is impossible to others. What comes easy to you? It might be a clue. What do people say that you're good at? What have other people told you to your face? Man, you're really good at this. That's intriguing. That's something that they see interesting about you that they think you're good at. What have you helped people do in the past? What have you helped people do in the past? What is the thing that people are coming to you for help on? That might be a clue because that means they look at you and they think you're a person that can help them with a specific area. Like people tend to come, in my church, people come to me for money help. Can you look at my budget? We want to buy a house. What do we got to do? We want to get out of debt. How do we start saving for retirement? Need to buy a new car. What should I be thinking about? The stock, like when the stock market crashed, early 2020, pandem pandemic hits, stocks are down 40, 50%, something like that. Market's way, way down. I literally remember I was at the beach on vacation right before everything happened with lockdown. We had a trip that we were able to squeeze in. We were in the Florida Keys. We were in Key West. I remember getting texts. Hey, stock market's down. Like, what should I be doing with my, my investments? Right? They want to know. The answer was buy more stocks. Because then guess what? The market's at an all-time high now. You made a ton of money if you bought stocks when everyone else was selling, as is always the case. That's neither here nor there. But people come to me for money advice. Don't know why. I'm not a money expert other than I've, I'm passionate about money. I've studied. I've written, I don't know how many investment books, behavioral psychology books on money I've read. I'm fascinated by money. I enjoy money a lot. Do you enjoy money? I think you do. I do. It's very, very fun. I like having it rather than not having it. Um, and I've been blessed to be successful in the creating of it and the managing of it. So those are two separate skills. A lot of people can make a good living, but can they keep a good living or turn that living into assets, into true wealth? And by God's grace, I've been good at both. So people come to me for that. That's a clue of something that maybe I'm passionate about because I must be good at it, at it enough that people want help with it. What is that for you? And then here's the final question to think about. If you had a Saturday afternoon all to yourself, no responsibilities, nothing you had to do, what would you spend a few hours just reading about or listening to podcasts about? What topic would you spend a few hours on a lazy Saturday afternoon reading about or listening to podcasts about? Those might give you clues as to what you're passionate about. And I want you to tease those out. And don't judge those passions. Don't say, that's never going to work. That's never going to work. How is anyone going to pay me for that? Don't prejudge them. Just write them down. I want you to brainstorm those ideas, those passions. It's a great place to start. It's not a great place to finish. Then what we have to do is good old-fashioned research. The R word. We have to think about, okay, these are my passions. Eating pizza, watching Star Wars, uh, reading investment books, making YouTube videos, music, like whatever it is for you, right? Going to the movies. Um, what of those topics could be valuable to normal everyday people? So there's two things that have to happen. You got to ask a couple of questions and that means you have to interact with human beings. I know. I like to start with social media, like your following, even just, you know, friends and family, kids you went to high school with, your actual family in person. Um, or you can just get on sort of subreddits. You can look at Facebook groups and search this on Facebook. You can look at Amazon and see if there's books that are bestsellers on these topics. You can learn a lot by doing this research, but I would, when you can interact with people, you get better 
responses. So uh, there's two questions you need to ask, right? Relating, so pick the, the passion you're most passionate about. So if it, if it was pizza eating, for me, I would maybe go ask people, you know, one, this is question number one, what is your biggest hope or dream related to blank? So let's say I, you know, I'm good at money and managing money. I mean, I really, I'm really, i really interested in money and talking about personal finance. I might be asking people, when you look at your finances, like what's your biggest hope or dream related to your finances? And see what they say. See A, if they say anything. And then B, what do they say? Um, that's going to give you a big clue is if there's interest or intrigue there. And then the flip is ask them, what is your current biggest frustration related to managing your money or your personal finances? You want to open the door to desire, you know, and then pain, desire, pain, problems, desires, hopes, dreams, fears. Those are emotional things, two sides of the same coin. Uh, one's positive, one's negative. But if you ask those questions around those subjects that you're interested in, you're passionate about, you will notice if there are emotionally charged responses, big hopes, big dreams, big desires, or if there's the opposite, which is just as good, big pain points, big problems, big anxieties, big fears related to X, Y, and Z. If you get emotional responses either way, that's a good indicator that there's something there, that there's something that keeps people up at night, uh, either for good or for worse, uh, which is going to give you a clue that there's there's some meat on these bones. Um, if you're getting crickets, meaning if no one's responding, um, you might need to ask more questions, you might need to do more research, or you might need to move on to another topic. But this is the process that you go through of, yes, yeah, start with your passions and your skills, but find that intersection, which of those really line up with what other people want. If you can marry the two, you're on the right track, okay? If you have 30 minutes a day, that's what you need to spend your time doing right now. Brainstorming your passions, doing some research, talking to people, talking to people, finding out, man, is there something here? Is there something here? Could, is there a need here? Can I help people with this? Either alleviate a pain or achieve a result? That's your step one. Find that intersection of passion and value. Step two is become a content creator. Okay. I am blown away by how many people miss this. They they might get the idea of like, oh, if I invented something amazing or if I have a great product or service, that's great. And then all I got to do is just sell it. Be really good at selling and marketing. Okay, there's a huge step that has skipped and that is audience building. Now more than ever, you need an audience. It is one of the most powerful things in business. And there's a saying that I've been saying for a few years now, because I think it encapsulates this. Without an audience, nothing is possible. But with an audience, anything is possible. Okay, that about sums up my business model. Without an audience, nothing is possible. It doesn't matter how talented you are, how amazing you are, how great of a product you have. If there's no one that knows about you or it, none of, none of the thing matters. It's just you by yourself. It's a hobby. But with an audience captive audience, eyeballs, people who care about what you're doing. Anything is possible. We'll go through these monetization ways in a minute, these monetization models in a minute. But if you have an audience, the sky's the limit to what you could do. I don't, there's no guarantee you'll be successful, but it means anything is now possible. Everything hinges on audience. Always has, always will. It's definitely true in this modern internet age, okay? So there's, the way you get an audience, you either buy an audience which is a way, or you build an audience. Building an audience is slower, but it's healthier. It's more sustainable and it's more fun. So the way you build an audience is you create content. That's follow worthy. That's audience worthy. We're in an age where we consume content all day and all night. 24 hour news cycle, social media posts that are about nothing, social media posts that are about substance as well. Videos, blog articles, podcasts, audiobooks, print books, movies, Netflix, streaming TV, sports. It's all content. And it's all we do is consume it. Content is the most important thing. The biggest brands in the world are spending so much money for what? content. Why? So they can get an audience. Why? So that they can then monetize that audience, either to pay for the content directly, a la a Netflix or Disney Plus streaming content, or to advertise to that audience, 
a la the TV model that we've had forever, the radio model, give away content for free so that advertisers will then pay you because you've got an audience. You see, audience is key and content brings an audience. So you wanna be creating content and there's two keys to content, right? Value, comes back to that word, has to be valuable content. Anybody can make content, but is it any valuable? Is it valuable to anybody? Value and consistency. Anybody can make valuable content, I think, but most people aren't consistent. So value and consistency. So you always wanna ask yourself, what my audience would find valuable. Not just what you want to talk about, not just what you like, but what would your audience find valuable? And then once you have a list of those things, what would my audience find valuable? And you only know that by asking them, by the way. Then commit to a constant, a consistent, excuse me, rhythm of delivery. Consistent. It's so, so important. So that consistency and that rhythm doesn't have to be every day. I've never posted every day but it, at minimum it should be every week. Like a good TV show, it should be at least every week, right? A lot of podcasts are once a week. A lot of YouTube channels are once a week. A lot of TV shows are once a week. If you can do more than once a week, great. The more content, the better. But the key is, is it valuable and are you consistently delivering it? So pick a day or days and always deliver. This is a non-negotiable. Again, if you have 30 minutes a day, don't get overwhelmed by this. Once you've done your research, then you don't no longer need to do that research. Then you can move to step two, which is this content, becoming a content creator. If you have 30 minutes a day throughout the week, just chip away at that one piece of content. I want you to deliver one piece of content a week. That's three hours a week. If you can't make a piece of content in three hours, you're, you're doing it wrong, okay? This does not have to be perfect. This does not have to be long. This does not have to be impressive. It has to be what? Say it with me. Valuable. Okay, valuable. Value is in the eye of the beholder. Don't let your insecurities make, make you obsess over amazing graphics on your videos or B-roll or cute music. Don't make your insecurity about your content force you to have the most polished podcast or the longest blog post with all the research and data in it. None of those things are bad but go back to minimum effective dose. What matters is, are you talking about something that truly matters to your audience and are you giving them valuable information? You can do that in a short little blog post. It takes you an hour to write, okay? So this is a long game. I think this is where I lose people. They're like, well, how's this, how long is this gonna take to build an audience? It's gonna take a while. Sometimes it can blow up quickly, I get it. So I'm not saying it's impossible and maybe that's your story, but for most of us, it takes a long time. Um, but there's two huge benefits to being a content creator. One, you can build an audience of loyal fans who love everything you do. If you have that, the, the sky's the limit to what you can do, my friend. The sky's the limit. And then two, by creating content consistently over a long period of time, you build credibility in the marketplace. If you're like me, you're a no-name personality. Nobody knew who I was. Plenty of people still don't know who I am, of course. But when I got started, even in my little niche of audio recording and music, nobody knew who I was. No credibility, right? How did I create credibility? By showing up every week for the longest time, three times a week, delivering content, helping people, giving them results, giving them the, the, the truth, tricks, tactics, strategies, encouragement, motivation, inspiration. People would go do what I said, get results, come back and be like, this guy knows what he's talking about. This guy's helpful. This guy's for me. That builds credibility in the marketplace, okay? So content, 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 content. Pick a platform. I don't care if it's a podcast, video, blog post, 30 minutes a day, chip away at your one piece of content a week. If you can do more, great, but make it valuable, make it consistent. And third and final step, right? Monetize. Monetize your audience. So we get to finally start talking about money. And ironically, this is where most business training starts is they wanna talk about the how you make money. But you see what we've skipped so far? If we just start here at the money making, the monetizing, we've skipped making sure that you have an idea that anybody cares about. We've skipped building an audience to then sell your products to or monetize to. You can have the best marketing tactics in the world, but if nobody knows you exist, they're not gonna do anything for you. So we can't start with the money. Well, we get there eventually. That's the whole reason we got into this, but you start with the step, first two steps we started with. So when it comes down to monetizing your audience, going back to what I said, without an audience, nothing's possible, but with an audience, anything's possible. 
Here's what's possible. If you have an audience, you can monetize in one or all of six ways. Are you ready for it? Number one, advertising. Oldest monetization model in the book, right? If you have a, a loyal audience, fans love what you do, that pay attention to your content, consume your content, there's gonna be advertisers, there's gonna be companies that have products or services that your audience would love to consume and they would love to pay you to show an ad or to talk about a product. So this can show up in as simple as a banner ad on your website. This can show up as a sponsored post where you literally talk about a product on YouTube or your podcast. This can, this can show up as you having a, a sponsor at the beginning of your podcast saying, hey, this episode's brought to you by Goodyear Tires. They're my favorite tires. I put them on my cars, whatever it is, right? Advertising, it's very simple. You build the audience by giving away free content. Someone else pays you to mention their products to your people. Uh, you can also, a form of this is also sponsored deals and brand deals where they'll just um, pay you directly to sort of be all about their product. So it doesn't have to be a commercial all the time, but they'll pay you to make an episode or a video about their products. And you have to, these days you have to be uh, clear that it's a sponsored post, but instead of just squeezing in a little ad here and there, you can make an entire post about that product because you're getting paid by these advertisers. So sponsored deals, advertising, it's all the same thing. So that's monetization model number one. Other companies pay you because you have an audience. Number two is affiliate marketing. So nobody pays you directly, but if there's a product or service you really care about, you can promote it to your people because you get a cut when somebody buys it. If they use your specific link or your specific code at checkout, you get a cut. So an example of this uh, is uh, there's a guy, Alpha M on YouTube that I follow who talks about men's you know fitness and grooming and styling and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and he's always mentioning products and he's always mentioning affiliate links. And so one day he was talking about stylish ways for men to dress and he mentioned watches and uh, it was a beautiful segue as he normally does into mentioning his favorite watch company. I don't know if it's his favorite, but it's the one he was gonna promote called Movement Watches. And uh, he had a code to get 30% off your first watch purchase. So what did I do? I went to the link, used his code, which means he's going to get a cut also. He's going to make some money off the purchase. And I bought literally this watch. It's beautiful. And now I bought four other movement watches. It was a great move on movement because now I'm a long standing customer, but it was a great move on his part. He got a cut from me making a purchase through his link and using his code. So affiliate marketing is great. I do that here all the time with Kajabi. You've heard me talk about Kajabi, right? Kajabi is the software platform I use to run both of my businesses. It's the best platform if you wanna run an online business. I love it. I've been using it for seven years. I've been using it since 2013. But once they, they opened up an affiliate program for it in 2018, I jumped on that bad boy because I'm already an evangelist for the product. I love it. I believe in it. I can sleep well at night recommending it. So I recommend it all the time and I have an affiliate link. If you go to grahamcochran.com slash Kajabi, you get double the free trial that they normally give you. You get a bunch of training videos that they don't give you if you sign up on their normal website. And then if you stick around and become a paying customer of Kajabi and run your online business with it after the 28 day free trial, part of your payment for Kajabi comes back to me to support my channel. That's affiliate marketing. It's beautiful, it works really, really well. So affiliate marketing is great. You can only do this if you have an audience to market those affiliate products too. Number three, crowdfunding. This is as simple as you got an audience that will support you to raise money for something. It could be a one-time thing like Kickstarter, or it can be a monthly recurring thing like Patreon, where people support you with a dollar a month or $2 a month or $5 a video or whatever it is, support you so that you can keep making your content. Crowdfunding. Again, you can't crowdfund if you don't have a crowd. That's what's called crowdfunding. You need an audience. Uh, number four is consulting. If you know something that you're really good at, people can hire you to just basically advise them, give them your advice, just brain dump your knowledge and experience to them. This could also be called coaching, right? So I started the Graham Cochran business doing this, coaching. Before I had grahamcochran.com, before I had online course membership and YouTube channel, I did one-on-one -on -one consulting or coaching with business owners. Typically they were business owners who were already doing six figures who wanted to scale to multiple six figures or seven figures, or they were a service-based business doing six figures that wanted to free up their time and not work as many hours in their business, but still make the same amount of money. So I was teaching them about passive income and all this stuff that I teach you here. So I was getting paid directly and still do. I do fewer one-on-one -on -one coaching clients these days. So I was getting paid directly one-on-one -on -one to just consult, right? If you have an audience, you can offer your consulting services. Very easy. 
Number five, related to that, is a service-based business. If you have an audience, you can then advertise your service. I've got a friend named John who does like marketing funnel hacks. He helps you like optimize your, your email funnels and your evergreen funnels. And primarily what he offers is a service. You know, so he has an all he does audience building, but then he markets like, hey, you know, jump on a, an audit, a little mini audit. Well, we'll look at your funnel and give you some advice. And then that really usually leads to a a that's paid, but B that leads to like a package real deal where they will improve your funnel for you. It's a done for you service, but he builds an audience to be able to eventually sell his service too. And number six, products. Have your own products. These are the holy grail of monetization. Something that you can sell uh, to your audience. Physical product or a digital product. And I'm going to point you to digital products because they are my absolute favorite. I mean, see how there's a million things you can offer, but you need people to offer it too. So if you're crazy busy, you need to spend your 30 minutes a day right now figuring out your idea, finding the intersection between what you're, you're passionate about and what people find valuable, researching, interacting with people, chewing on it, looking at Facebook groups, looking at Amazon, seeing what books are selling, see what of your passions actually have a market and then what specifically does that market want, okay? And then two, once you figure that out, you can move on and you start to create content. Start a blog, start a YouTube channel, start a podcast. Start building an audience. When you put out content in the world like I do on YouTube, like I do on my blog, you get discovered through search engines, Google, Bing, YouTube. People find your content. People share your content. You can share it on social media. Eventually, people are finding you because of your content and you're building an audience of people who really trust you and respect you and love everything you do. And then step three, once you've got that going, you can slowly but surely build your first monetization product. That's what I would just build a product, a digital product. If you don't have the brain space to do that, you could start advertising, you could start affiliate promoting, or you could start offering a service. A million ways you can monetize, but that is the key. And again, you only need to chip away at this 30 minutes a day, which is three hours a week, if that's all you have. You can still do this. There's no excuse is what I'm saying. Now, if this seems overwhelming, I don't want you to be overwhelmed. I want you to launch your business in the next 30 days. I mentioned this at the beginning of the episode. I have an entire guide called my 30-day online income jumpstart. It's an action-packed PDF. Here's what it's going to walk you through a four-week step-by-step plan to launch your business without all the sweat, without all the stress, without all the hustle, without all the overwhelm. Very calm, very manageable. You're going to get detailed checklists that tell you exactly what simple and free tools to use. You can do this for free when you're getting started. And then I'm going to give you a proven framework for making your first $500 that then can build, like I said, up to your next $500 thousand dollars because it's the same business model that I use to run both of my businesses. So you're getting a quick start. You're getting a jump start, making money quickly right away, but you're not shortchanging the process. What you're actually doing is building a foundation with which you can then scale your business, which is beautiful. So it's super easy to read, super easy to digest. It's literally bullet points, my friend. So I want you to have it. Just go to grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. You can download it below if you're watching on YouTube. I'm going to link to it. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. Download it. Put a date on your calendar to implement everything in it. Follow it step by step. It's just four weeks. You don't have to jump the gun. Don't do week three before week one. Just do one week at a time. It's going to give you a step-by-step model to take these three steps that we talked about and crystallize them even more specifically. And uh, you're going to make money. And then you're going to be hooked. And then you're going to have a model that you can then build off of, which I'm really, really excited about. So grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. I'm excited for you. If you're crazy busy, and if this seems doable to you, let me know in a comment below. Uh, I want to know what about it seems hopeful. What are those steps makes sense to you? And if you're crazy busy and this wasn't helpful, if you're like, dude, I don't know. I'm still stuck here. I need help get breaking through some, some doubts about this. Let me know in a comment below also if you're watching on YouTube. I'm happy to dive in and help you out. I want you to actually do this. I want this to be the year that you take action. I don't care what's happened so far this year. I don't care how hard it's been. You owe it to yourself to start this. You owe it to yourself even in the midst of a crazy, busy year, season, month, whatever, to start this business. You can do it. I believe in you, even if you don't believe in yourself. Okay? That's it for today, my friend. Stay healthy. Stay safe. 
and I'll see you on another episode real soon.